and we're just gonna see the comparison here and see if we can make some notes and meet uh, me plus is here I call her meeps she's here to help me keep track of these discrepancies and keep track of their stats while we do this experiment and up front first so the reason we're even in this battle is because of this character lug because he doesn't show up in the party list um, when we aggress from this battle and he only shows up in the second to last battle the one cool thing though is he keeps his leveling he levels every time you repeat this battle he doesn't go up a level but you can you his his XP is consistent every time you return to this fight which is the second fight of two fights where you can almost level on accident so thank goodness that's not a problem um, but yeah, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to compare everybody's stats via class-wise. And then we're going to find out who's the best at what. And if I see a discrepancy with the promoted, with the pre-promoted characters, then we're going to talk about what maybe has happened. And is there a way to judge them better? Or are they just doomed to suck because of the, of the situation? But let's get it ready. Are you ready, Meeps? The amazing, wonderful, lovely Meeps, who is in our chat, who's going to keep track of all the numbers because I'm terrible at it. Yes, she is ready. So we're going to start with the Gladiators because of, of Lug, which is Luke from the first Shining Force game. So that's Luke from Shining Force 1, if you were wondering, Meeps. There we go. So <clears throat> Lug's H, uh, HP is 52. His attack with the Battle Axe is 68, his defense is 53, agility 22, and his movement is 5. Um, and don't worry, we'll wait to make sure Meeps gets that all logged, locked in. And then we'll go warp and egress out of this fight and look at uh, the other gladiators, Gates and uh, Roos, who are the other two gladiators. But we want to make sure we get the numbers for Lug first. This is an oversight that a lot of people do when they try to do this test. They just ignore Lug. And we're also going to put a negative point on Lug right out the door. Because you only get him in the last battle of the game. That's already, you know, a, a point against the guy. Uh, and he comes in at level 12. So I had to level him 8 levels to make him comparable to anyone. Did you... 6853 agility 22 movement 5 no that's right oh it's his hp is 52 one hp is not a big deal just just add a little tag there that the hp is 52 we'll be good cuz there's only two two gladiators other gladiators we got to look at there we go yay so uh that's the deal here with lug 52 hp attack 68 defense 53 agility 22 movement 5 Alright, let's go ahead and egress from the battle <clears throat> as we do the gladiators first. So, warp, 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 warp. Let's go ahead and look at the members here of the force. Let's look at Roos. Now, he... Let me check something really quick. I believe Roos... Uh, Lug had a battle axe on him, right? Not the great axe, if I'm not mistaken. So, I believe... Unless I, I missed that. I, I, I forgot what weapon. But Roos had... Uh, regardless, Lug... We've got Lug's stats, regardless of what weapon. So, that might be a controversial issue, but I'm not going to worry about it that much. So, let's we'll look at Roos last. We, let's look at Gates, who's probably more in common with Lug than uh, Roos will be. So let's take a look at Gates here. So Gates is the other gladiator. He joins the party pre-promoted. He comes into the party at level 3 gladiator. He has 40 HP. His attack is 67. His defense is 51. His agility is 27. So he's a bit faster than Lug. And his movement is 5. However, with that said, Lug has 12 HP more. Uh, their eight, their attack is about the same, only about off by a point. Their defense is only off by two points, so that's negligible. Uh, f a five agility difference is pretty significant, and Gates's movement is five, and that's standard. So with that said, Lug wins in the stats department, but he loses a very big point because you get Gates in uh, what was it, chapter three? I want to say, and in somewhere in the beginning of chapter three, he's the he's the second promoted character, pre-promoted character you get. 
and I want to say that so I want so even though Lug is statistically better, I'm giving a point to Gates. I'm giving the win to Gates. You get him earlier. But with that said, because Gates has got the great axe equipped, let's go look at um, Roos here, the gladiator we get at the beginning of the game, and this is where I start worrying about some of these characters. Roos's HP is 57, so his HP is only five points better than Lug. That's just on the fringe of relevance, right? But uh, Roos's attack, unfortunately, um, is 78. It's 10 points higher than Gates, or Lug, and 11 points higher than Gates. His defense is 59, which is 6 points higher than Lug. His agility is the same as Gates. So he wins in every single category that counts for a gladiator. Now we're going to... But... And, uh, and even in HP. So Roos is a fucking beast. But again, I do wonder and ponder if that's because he got, you know, 10 extra levels off other characters. But we're going to check some of these other characters because we've got... Uh, We've got um, we've got bird uh, we've got birdmen and we've got paladins to look at as well, and we also have casters. So uh, we'll take a look at that in a moment. So th so the winner is Roos. It's easily by far Roos. Again, under certain stipulation. All right. With that said, now we're good. So let's now break down the other classes here. We've got archers. We've got monks, which. Unlike Gong in Shining Force 1, we have two monks. And we only have... And we have two monks, we have a priest, one priest, and we have a magic healing creature. So, that spectrum is going to be very weird. What I'm going to do is give you the best master the best master monk, and I'm going to give you the best standard healer. So, M M Sig and, and uh, Kray are going to duke it out for best healer. For best master monk, then we're going to go with the best overall healer out of all four of them as well. So it's going to be a little weird when we do them because master monks play very differently than uh, than uh, the, the the standard healer. So and and same with just like the casters, we've got Wendy, we've got um, Domingo, and we've got uh, Yisha, and we got to break them down uh, just as much. So we'll do that too. We've got, I said we have our archers, we have a lot of paladins, we have two birdmen who actually, as opposed to um, Shining Force 1, these birdmen are pretty good. Um, and we also have a couple specialty characters like Gaian, to whom I will compare Gaian maybe with the... Uh, the, the Gaian shares more in common with um, a couple other characters, so we'll, uh, specialty characters. So I'm going to put Gaian... Um, and the main character in their own bracket. But you know what? For the sake of argument, let's compare Gaian to Roos in Gates and Lug because he shares the most in common with that grouping of characters. So Gaian um, does not have the power ring equipped, so keep that in mind. So let's do Gaian next, Meeps. And we'll compare Gaian and uh, Roos together, I think is a good idea. So he's a berserker. Gaian is notoriously defined as the one of the worst characters in the game. I don't know why. Um, his stats are pretty legit. Um, his stats are not better than Roos's, mind you. He's still attacking. His attack, uh, his HP is actually is is eleven points higher. So he has pretty good HP. His attack is seventy. So we're talking eight points less than Roos. His defense is 56, which is three points less than Roos. Their agility is actually the same. So, in all fairness with Gaian, now, that said, Gaian equips no weapon. We can still, there's still a better axe for Roos, and that's the Atlas Axe. So, theoretically, Roos will outclass Gaian. Um, so, maybe that's the argument that people make. But just raw strength alone, he's better than... Uh, than Gates, so, and not, but not by much, N and he's not much better than Lug either, so, these are some things to think about, I mean, if Gaian's a weak, I, I, when you break it down that, that way, I would say, like, if for some reason your Roos isn't developing very well, Gaian's an alternative, <clears throat> but I believe the Atlas Axe, and we'll try it out right now, because Roos is holding it, 
We'll give the Atlas Axe to the worst to Gates. We'll give the Atlas Axe to Gates, and then we'll take a look at the difference between their attack. But I have a feeling it's not gonna... I think it's possible that, um... You know what? 67 to 69. So if Gaian's attack is at 70, um, and Roos and uh, Gates's defense is at 51, um, and Gates's HP is 40 versus Gaian 68, even then Gates is not. I don't think Gates is technically better than Gaian. But again, if you're only going to have one of these types of characters in your party, go with Roos. Even there, look at that. Roos will get the two extra, you know, strength with the Axe of Atlas. So, <clears throat> put bumping him up to that 80, that covered at 80. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we've done Guyan, because Guyan doesn't really have anything to compare to. So, that's just the way that that's, that's going to be. Alright, so, let's look at our swordsmen, which are Claude. We're going to look at Claude, we're going to look at Shriek. And we're going to look at our hero, um, which is the Kudori in this game. And the thing that you need to know is, yes, Kudori gets the Sword of Hyja. Hylia, Hyja. Gets the Sword of Hyja later. But that's only in the last battle, so I'm not going to include it here because it's only for one battle. But Kudori gets ma the hero, whose name is Nick in the game. The original name is Nick. He gets magic. Um, and the magic's actually pretty good. He just doesn't get a lot of MP to support it, so that's up for debate. Um, and so we'll do that. So let's look at the Birdman first, and we'll figure out who's the better Birdman. So let's look at Shriek. We'll take a look here at Shriek first. So we gotta go back to, um, member status. Go back to Shriek. And you see, he has a broadsword. Now, our hero does not have a broadsword. He's got the critical sword, which is a slightly better sword. But I'm going to leave it there anyway, because you have to use it. We're not going to get into the specifics on that. That's just silly to change that out. Um, but anyway, there we go. So Birdmen have the ability to fly. Um, uh, Shriek's got 54 HP. His attack is 69. Giggity! His defense is 44. Agility, 24. And his movement is 6. So the fact that they have 6 movement and that they can fly is pretty good. Now, when we compare the, these guys' attacks to Lug, Gaian, you know, Sh Shriek does one point of damage different than Gaian. Okay, so that's not bad. His defense is lower, his HP is lower, but he's got, and his agility is lower, but he can fly, and he's got better movement. So those are the things you gotta consider, and he doesn't get the benefit of, of uh, terrain defense. So because of that, Flying kind of negates itself in a way because he never gets the benefit of of uh, terrain defense bonuses. So there is Shriek. Let's go ahead and take a look at everybody's favorite, which is Claude. So this is the one people. This is the one most people go with, and uh, you can kind of see why. Um, so Claude's HP is fifty, so it's less. It's four points less than Shriek. So this is where I start to point out that it's a little weird. Because Claude and Sh you get Shriek uh, later in the game, pre-promoted at level 7. So their stats are actually very comparable. Shriek has 4 HP, uh, Claude has 4 HP less. But Claude's attack? Ooh-wee, it's, it's 6 points higher. Um, Claude's defense is 56, so that's 12 points higher than, uh, than uh, Shriek. Ooh. His agility is a little better too. So, okay, maybe the way I should say this is is that, yeah, Claude has less HP, but he just destroys Shriek and everything else. So, again, it makes you wonder, could Shriek technically be better if we gave him, like, uh, if he comes promoted at level 7, if we gave him uh, 13 more levels, if he actually gains stat bonuses... This is something I might ask if you guys want me to do. Do you want me to go and give them the difference and say that way they leveled evenly? The same amount of levels. But I, if they don't gain levels every level, then it's kind of a moot point. Because the Shriek would never catch up to Claude, ex except beating him in HP. So Shriek is distinctly and definitively the winner there. 
Um, so let's look at uh, Qdori, or Nick as he is in the main game. He did not learn Bolt level 4 until he reached level 20 promoted. So 40 levels of, of, of leveling until he got Bolt 4, which costs 20 MP. He can only cast it once. Uh, <clears throat> his attack is 75. His HP is 65, so it's 15 better than uh, Claude. His attack is actually the same as Claude, and he's using, a, I believe, a better weapon. So you could assume that it's lower with the worse weapon. The defense are only off by one point, but... Kudori, you'll notice, has uh, superior agility at 33, and he has a movement of 6. Now, he can't fly, but he gains the benefit of terrain defense. Um, and he has bolt magic that he can fling around, um, and it's somewhat useful. So, even though his physical defense is about the same as Claude's, he technically gets better defense because he gets the terrain benefit. He also has more HP outright, so that means he can take breath attacks better and magic attacks better. And his agility is faster, so his turn starts earlier in the round. And yes, eventually you get him the Sword of Hyja, and he's the only person that can actually damage the final boss. Not that that's relevant or anything but to the study, but it's an interesting observation. Alright, with that said... Let's see, so we've covered that. Let's go ahead and do our snipers, or archer types, which we only have two, because, you know, this is a this is a Game Gear game remade for the Sega CD. So we're going to look at Shade, and we're going to look at Stock. Now, Shade is a regular archer, and Stock is a ranger. And if you remember from Shining Force 1, Rangers are centaur types, so he's going to receive all the penalties that we gave and benefits of a centaur, and include that. But and they both came, uh, both of them came at you know before promotion. Promotion. So this is a very e equal study here, as there were no other ranged archer types that came later. <clears throat> so of course you can see I have he has the. Great shot equipped, not the buster shot, as the buster shot is the stronger weapon. So Shade has 60 HP, sweet. His attack is freaking 80. Making Hans his bitch, and he's the son of Hans, by the way. I believe that is established, he is the son of Hans. And uh, he looked at his dad and said, hey dad, you're a bitch. And he got ripped like Hulk Hogan and started freaking using a bow launcher for a weapon. Um, <clears throat> but his attack is 80, his defense is 47, so that's um, better than some of the promoted characters we're going to see later. Um, his agility is 29 and his movement is 6. Um, and he can shoot from 3 squares away, give or take aiming direction. So he's a pretty decent ranged unit, um, but we need to check him against his, his close competitor, which is Stock the Bow Knight. So, now, again, Stock suffers from centaur issues, and they, they did something weird. They, if you look at Stock, he's got a movement of 6, but if you look at Apis, he has a movement of 7. So, for Stock, they didn't give him the movement. They didn't give him centaur movement for some reason. I wasn't sure if... I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a balancing issue they came across, or they just forgot to do it. But, yeah, Stock doesn't get that one extra movement that other centaurs get. But I believe he still suffers from the movement penalties of a centaur. So I believe that is... Yeah, because I remember him not moving as far as Shade could. So I believe. And we can double check that if anybody at home remembers that. S say so. But I'm pretty sure he still suffers from centaur movement penalties. His HP is 59. One point from Shade. That's nothing. His attack is 10 less than Shade. Defense is negligible. They're only two points apart, and so is agility. It's only two points apart. Um, so, with that said, who's the better centaur, or who's the better uh, ranged uh, archer? Well, it's got to be Shade right now. Shade outperforms uh, stock in raw attack power, just absolute raw attack power, um, and it's 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 apparent. Now, are these numbers closer when they're not max leveled? Possibly, maybe even sometimes based on the random levels that characters get, getting to level 20, stock might out might pull away from shade. But in a perfect study, <clears throat> not a perfect, but in a perfect leveling system like this, where we did 20 and 20 for both of them, this is where it ended up. 
10 attack is so it takes several levels to achieve. Um, so that's pretty significant. So we've covered them. Um, and before we go to everybody's favorite, the magic users, we're going to do the paladins. And we're going to start with the promoted paladins first because I have a feeling that the unpromoted ones are going to be better. So we've got Randolph here. And everybody's equipped with a chrome lance. So let's take a look at Randy here. Randy! So he has 63 health. His attack is 72, which is pretty good. His defense is 56. Again, nothing to shake nothing to shake a finger at. His agility is 25 and his movement is 7. <coughs> That's not a bad set of numbers. And I think is it I think Randolph is one of the the dark horse dark horses as far as like people usually never use Randolph because the other characters are better, but here's something interesting. However, let's look at some of these other centaurs and really start thinking about which one's actually better. <laughs> but yeah, so that's an interesting look as he he's you get Randolph at pre-promoted level 6. So let's take a look at uh Kashing who you who ch comes into the party before promotion, which is again something we want to really observe. So Kashing comes in and his HP is 67. So it's better than Randolph's. His attack is 68. So that puts it four points lower than Randolph. His defense is 53, which is three points lower than Randolph as well. His agility is 25, which is the same as Randolph. So Kashin might be a hair worse. Just a hair worse than Randolph. So again, if you're leveling these two uh, paladins side by side you might get some different numbers you might get some different performances from these guys um but it's an interesting observation that kashing a character we got 20 levels and then promoted right is actually not that much not that statistically different from randolph but we're not done yet we still have uh, apis who is the one we get at the beginning let's take a look at apis this is kind of disappointing. Apis is at 64. So he's only one point different than Randolph. His attack is 65, which is lower than Keshing and Randolph. His defense is 53, which is tied for Keshing, but not high, as high as Randolph. And his agility is 27, so he is faster than the other two paladins. But this is where it gets weird. If we look at their statistics, and Meep's going to put them up so I can see all three of them side by side, but I'm pretty sure the best paladin is actually Randolph. It's actually Randolph. He has three better defense, he has four better attack, and he, though he has the lowest HP only by one point, um, the stats that we really care about our paladins having, he has. He has them. And they're over, and I did say one of the limiters was in in Shining Force in the Shining Force one example is two points is in the within the margin of to me error like it's not a big deal but he's three points in defense and four points in attack so I'm giving it to Randolph the pre promoted character technically can be the best paladin I know it's madness witchcraft witchcraft. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I'm as I, I was as surprised as you guys were. Probably are seeing that. Because again, most people say the best characters are the ones that get the extra levels before promotion. But I did do 20 levels of them and then promoted them. So I don't know what to tell you. That that's that's a weird one. Okay, let's go ahead and figure out who the best master monk is. So let's start with everybody's favorite, which is actually Cray. Most people like Cray. So when we, again, when we compare casters, we look at their their stats, and we look at their magic selection. Okay, magic selection is a big deal when it comes to casters. But in the case of Master Monks, we need to look at attack and defense. Agility is nice, but unless it's a significant difference, it's not that important. And HP and MP are also important. So Master Monks are the hardest to analyze because every single thing with them tends to be very important. 
because sometimes they can dish out as much damage as any frontline fighter. But let's take a look at Cray, who, holy mother of Burl, his attack is 77. Is that he hits harder than any of the paladins. He hits harder than any of the paladins. He has HP that's still that's only three points lower than the lowest paladin. His defense is the equivalent of uh, Apis and Cashing. And his agility is actually one point better than uh, two of the paladins. So why would I want to use a paladin when I can just use Cray? Because he's Cray Cray. So there's something to think about. Holy mother of Burl. But 60 HP. His MP is 35. His attack is 77. His defense is 53. Agility 26 and his movement is 5. Um, he comes with the spells. Now he didn't get... I want to say he got heal level... F no... He, what did he get? He got Hell Level 3 last, I believe, of, of all of his spells. So, and he got that at, like, I want to say it was level 16 or 17 promoted. So, that's something to think about. So, he has Heal Level 4. That's a spell we care about. We don't care about Muddle. Boost Level 2 is pretty neat. Um, it's a very useful spell as it uh, boosts the defense and agility of all the characters surrounding him. And uh, it was a, up to the entire party if they're set up right. And Hell is pretty much um, a wind sp elemental spell. Um, it's not very strong, but it's really the only... Why would you use Hell when you have freaking Attack of 77? Why? Why? Explain to me! You know, so there, there's Cray. Let's, so that's pretty impressive. Let's take a look at Sig. So, oh, 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 oh. Sig is just as beastly. So... Sig has an HP of 60, which is equivalent to Cray. Um, his MP is, uh, what is that, 9 points higher? If Cray's, wait, Cray's MP was 35, so yeah, nine. so this is 44, so 9 points higher. So that's another he couple healing spells right there. His attack is 84, oh my goodness. Uh... <laughs> That is seven point, I, yeah, seven points higher than Cray. Um, the defense is actually the same, and the agility, his agility is a little better. So he has heal level four and hell level three. Uh, detox isn't very relevant uh, by the end game stuff because nobody's poisoning anybody anymore. But throughout your exposure of the game, detox is useful, and dispels is the equivalent of muddle. It's a complete sack of crap. Um, now, here's the thing. If you throw boost in there, I would say that a point goes to Cray for having the better magic selection because he's got boost. But again, uh, Sig has the better MP. He has more MP to burn, and his attack is significantly better. He hits hard. You know, Gong taught him well. He taught him to use that Jay Leno chin like a weapon. Okay, so Cray has always been everybody's favorite because the argument was Cray out damages Sig, is from stuff that I've been told and I've read and I've seen. Well, that's just not true in this case. Sig, Sig's attack significantly outclasses Cray's. So I'm going to give it to Sig because he wins in two categories, whereas Cray only wins in one, um, where there's everything else is kind of the same. However. Play style wise, you might like Sig more because he gets boost too. This is subjective and it depends on who your other healer in your party is going to be. Who to which we are going to analyze now. We're going to look at um, Mayfair, <clears throat> everybody's favorite, and we're going to look at uh, Amigo. So let's look at Amigo first. So Amigo comes into the game really late and at a very low level of 5 promoted. It's assumed promoted because these characters can't promote. Now, with that said, um, Amigo um, learns Aura level four at level at at level twenty. So you got to get Amigo all the way there. Um, Hell level four is neat. Boost level two, Amigo gets rather early, um, and then Dispel is whatever. But let's take a look at the stats that count as well. HP 46, MP 46, that's easy. Attack 55, Defense 45, Agility 28, and Movement 6. And in Amigo and Domingo as well are hovering creatures. So I believe they they gain the benefit of semi-flight. They can kind of fly, 
And I do believe in this game they still retain the benefit of the field of defense, so they don't get it, lose a point for flying. They don't neutralize their point. They get a bonus point for being a flying unit. Okay, so we're going to give Amigo that extra point for being a flying unit. And in that same breath, I'm pretty much going to take it away. Because Mayfair is far... You get Amigo in Chapter 4. The th third to fourth last battle of the game. So for the point that I give it for flying, it's losing a point because Amigo comes so late in the game. Again, that's the same problem that Lug had. Um, you just get him so late in the game, it's kind of trivial and pointless. But we got our stats, we got our spells. Let's look at Mayfair. He was going to be... Probably disappointing if you're a fan of Amigo. Um, so Mayfair... Already looking pretty good here, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, and you guys, if you're f watching, you've already figured some of this out. Just from looking at the baseline stats... Um, her health is 43, which is 3 points less than Amigos, and HP, that's nothing. That's not a big deal. MP is 55, so we've got, an, again, a 9-point difference between Mayfair and Amigo, and Mayfair is probably rather caught up with the rest of the party, um, whereas Amigo comes really late in the game. Mayf Mayfair comes really early in the game, so take, take that, uh, you know... Amigo fans, I guess. Uh, their attack is negligible. It's Well, it's not negligible. Mayfair's attack is four points better, but we don't really care about attack with our healers that much, unless they're the Master Monks. Um, her defense is 58 versus Amigo's 45. So, she wins in defense because defense is freaking relevant. Uh, that's just the survivability of your, your healer. So, as Mayfair being a vicar, that's not a problem. Agility is 28, so the agility is the same between Amigo and, and Mayfair. So, let's look at the magic spells, because that's the big deal. Now, she has heal level 4, muddle, which is useless, hell level 4, and aura level 4. Now, the thing with Mayfair and Amigo is that Mayfair has magical versatility. She can heal... hate when that happens. It happens once in a blue moon where we have those cutouts. So I apologize, guys. Let me see here. We're not... Are we back? Are we good? Yay, we're back. All right, so, Meeps, could you repost Amigo and Mayfair really quick? Just so I can double-check their numbers again. But here's what I'm going to say while she while she does that, just to double-check numbers. Mayfair has more MP. She has more defense. She has more versatility when it comes to her healing options, making her a more efficient healer. Okay. So, um, for me personally... I'm giving it to Mayfair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amigo can hover. That's dandy. But Amigo burns through the, her MP way faster than than Mayfair does. And Mayfair is just universally more... is better. Um, and remember, if you're using a, you know, a healer type and you're using a Master Monk, you've already got two really good healers out there. Now, you could make the argument, oh, I have Sigur or, or Cray out there. So Amigo works for the AoE healing. That's a fair argument. That doesn't have to do with raw statistics and character functional and function and potential. Okay, we're just talking about function and potential for these characters. And I find Mayfair to be more effective and useful. That's just the way I look at it. Because, again, like I said, she has more healing options and yeah, boost is nice, but you know what? I could have Mayfair and Cray, and we can we can sit here and argue this all night long. I still think Mayfair has more MP and better survivability than um, Amigo does. Even with Amigo, even if you make the argument that Amigo is hovering, which you can, um, I still think Mayfair's magic versatility outclasses and outshines Amigo. And the fact you get Amigo late in the game kind of cancels out one of that benefits anyway. So I'm giving the I'm giving the award to Mayfair. Mayfair is the best uh is the best healer. 
So let's, you know, and comparing Mayfair to Sig, who we voted was the, who I decided was the best. We didn't, there was no vote. I just made an executive decision. Um, <clears throat> obviously Mayfair has better healing potential than Sig does. Um, anyway, so if you're going to argue who the best healer in this game is, it's going to be Mayfair. Who the best frontline capable fighter type is, as from the healing caster, <laughs> casters, it's Sig. So you can't go wrong with Mayfair and Sig as your two healers. I sometimes play with three healers, so that would be when I might use Amigo. But even then, I might even use Cray over Amigo because I get them earlier. Anyway, just throwing that out there. So we've covered a lot of different classes, and I think the last one we gotta cover is the offensive caster types. So Domingo, who is a magic creature, and we're gonna cover Yisha, and Wendy, and we're gonna take a look at them very closely. And I am gonna point out that they all have a level four offensive spell, but with that said, that doesn't mean that that level four offensive spell is relevant, okay? Because it wasn't, they all achieved a level four offensive spell when they hit level 20, 20 promoted. So, unless you're gonna grind your characters to level 20, which you do not need to do to beat this game, there's really no point in even worrying about that. So let's take a look at Domingo. So again, we care about their HP, their MP, their defense, and their agility, and and their spell selection. And Domingo is looking pretty good right about now. He's he's the freeze specialist in this game. Um, but you also will notice he has Bolt level three and Blaze level three, and he's got the Soul level two. The Soul I don't really I consider it a useless spell. Because it only works about 20% of the time. And that's me being generous. I've actually sat down and tried analyzing how often it works. It's like one out of eight or nine times it works for me. So, with that said, one out of eight times, them numbers ain't looking so good. So I'm not going to include that as a bonus of any sort. But Domingo's flying, or hovering. So he gets some cool stuff. But his HP is 48, his MP is 42... His attack's 53, his defense 47, his agility 29, his movement is actually on the higher side at 6. Um, and he's got a really good spell layout. But now, again, Bolt doesn't come until much later for him, but it's still a pretty good layout. So let's take a look at Yisha, who gets Bolt level 4 at level 20 promoted. Um, with 20 levels of that. Now, I know she has a Protect Staff that gives her, I believe, a bonus to her defense. But I don't care, because Wendy gets the same staff. And you know what? That's a perk. If a character can equip a weapon that doesn't take part of their auxiliary item that they can equip, it should count. You notice, like, we could give Domingo... The, she could equip the Protect Staff and the Protect Ring. Domingo could only equip the Protect Ring. So we're going to leave the Protect Staffs alone and include that in our analysis. Because I think that's actually a legit sentiment. All right. Yisha's HP is abysmal at 34. She's probably the least HP character in the party. Um, which is scary when you think about it. She's very susceptible to breath damage. Uh, <clears throat> her MP is actually good, though. It's at 60. So that's already 18 points higher than Domingo. Now, with that said, she has the most MP-demanding spell, Bolt. Bolt's magic is a high MP. It's an MP drain. But it's the strongest elemental type in the game, and she gets access to Bolt magic really early compared to uh, the other characters that learn Bolt, including Nick. So her, her HP, though, is is not good. It's uh, 14 points less than Domingo. MP60, that's really good compared to Domingo. Her attack, we don't really care about. I'm not that cat. We don't use wizards and in, in, in these characters for their attacks. Her defense, though, compared to Amigo is what? Hers is 47. So, it's six points less, and with low HP, that's a pretty bad combination. But her And her agility is 30, so that's equivalent to Domingo, and she moves one space less. Her magic uh, uh, selection is Blaze and Bolt. Now, again, she get, I think she joins the party with Blaze level 1 or level 2. Um, and she learns it at a pretty decent time. Remember, you get Yisha w way before you get Domingo. And I say that subtly because the chapters don't have that many battles in it, but in the in the span of how long this game is, um, you get her relatively early. She's one of the last uh, 
non-promoted characters you get. So you're cutting it close because Domingo is one of the first pre-promoted characters you get. So you get them very close button to each other to a degree. But Yisha, um, interestingly, has the most damage output in the AoE. So that's something to consider as well. But it's, there's, a, there's a lot of debate on whether or not Yisha is good. Um, for someone like me, I usually can keep Yisha relatively safe. But this becomes tricky. So let's go ahead now. And compare with Wendy, everybody's favorite Wendy, who is rather tough to decide on. Her HP is 45, so it's only three less than Domingo, so that's not a big deal. Her MP is 63, so that's pretty good. That's a lot more than, than Domingo, so when you think about it... Well, not a lot more, it's eight more, but it's still good. It's still a good amount. Wait, 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 is that right? No, that's, no, that's not enough. It's, um... What was Domingo's MP's? Domingo's MP is 42, my bad. Um, so, uh, that's, yeah, that's like, okay, her MP is a lot better. <laughs> Let me, sorry about that. Let me take that back. Attack we don't care about. Defense is actually 52, which is actually better than Domingo's by uh, five points. Her agility is 32, which is the best out of both casters. So, this is a tough one because a lot of people... And I do make this argument, there are enemies resistant to fire magic. Um, and then there are enemies that are weak to it too. But by end game, most things are resistant to magic in general. Uh, but we're, we're, we're trying to be fair with statistics here. And that's the, that's the key point. So really, Yisha has the high... So here's how we're going to break this down. Because this is, a, this, is the, this is why I saved this one for last. This is the hardest one statistically to look at. Um... Yisha's stats aren't very good, but she has the highest damage output of any of the casters because she gets access to bolts 1, 2, and 3 long before Domingo gets them. So keep that in mind. She can get them early. She can exploit it early, and she can level the heck out of it early. Remember, casters that hit more than a couple, two or three targets, really benefit from that AoE of Bolt Level 2. And her MP jacks up pretty early on as well, where her HP is just sad to look at. But this is where it's... it's This is the closest statistically we've gotten to these three, to, to any character. Usually there's one that pulls away from the pack. Blaze is the weakest spell type. It also has the worst range. Okay. Um, now, Wendy does get freeze level 3, so that's actually pretty good. And she gets attack, which I, I, I consider that a useful support spell. A, a pretty useful support spell. Um, with that said, she has three useful spells. Domingo has three useful spells. Yisha only has two. Blaze and Bolt. The other two uh, aren't that good. Slow is garbage, and Desol only works when it kicks in. And if we're not counting Desol for Domingo, we're not going to count it for Yisha. So, to me, I almost want to say this is a, a, a tie to a degree because it depends on preference. But I will say this. In all fairness, in all seriousness, Domingo kind of wins. And he kind of wins because, number one, he's covering. Number two, he's got the most HP... Not by much, but he has the most HP. He and he has uh, he doesn't have the best defense, but he has a, the best spell set. But again, if this is subjective as hell, Wendy has three really good spells as well. And when you break it down, she. But here's the thing: is is that she cannot out damage and hit as many targets ever as Domingo could. And you can say the same argument for Yisha. So Wendy's magic, though more versatile, um, often not not no, it's not more versatile. Even though she has um, more MP and she has the attack buff as well, um, it's hard. It's really hard because I this is like the first legit tie I can think of is Wendy and Domingo, and even then, if you are really good at tactical RPG games. You can exploit the crap out of Yisha and make her good as well. See, that's the thing is Yisha has the most damage output. 
raw damage. She can hit the most targets at er long before Domingo can. And she has the MP to support it. So if you use her really, really carefully and properly and you're really good at your tactic games, Yisha will outdamage Wendy and Domingo. So, oh, I have to pick, don't I? Do I have to pick Meeps? They're all so good in their own way. This is what's hard with Book 1 Shining Force uh, CD. The, the, the casters are balanced rather well. Um, and they're balanced and based on your play style. Wendy's a little bit more tanky, but you re you 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 lose that for the buff and and the lack of of the strongest offensive magic available. Domingo's got the best ice spell in the game. He's got a lot less MP to work with, so that kind of blows. So that means he doesn't get to cast those spells as much. Again, that's damage output that reduces his damage output. Um, and then Yisha. Um, has the strongest offensive magic and a decent MP load to de go with it, but her survivability isn't as good. Oh, you're going to make me pick, Meeps. Um, for my play style, I would, I would pick... God, if for my playing style, I'd have to give it to... Yisha. For me, it's Yisha. And the only reason why is because she has the highest damage output of any of the casters. She just has terrible survivability. No, you know what? I'm torn. See, okay, so for me in a casual playthrough, I always end with Yisha. <laughs> it's what the people want to know it. <laughs> it's what the people want. I know it's what the people want, meeps. So... If I had to pick two casters for my party, it would be Yisha and it would be Domingo every time. Because that's the max damage output. If I was forced to pick one, and only one, it would be Domingo. It would have to be Domingo. He has the, the magic versatility going for him. So, let me break this down. Yeah, he doesn't have as much damage output as Yisha, but keep this in mind... You can use weaker spells and, and still get the range that you want. Okay? You know, you can. I can still get the range that I want with Freeze at a good range. And I also have Bolt level 4. Well, he got that... No, he, he didn't. He doesn't have Bolt level. He has Bolt level 3. Um, I can still use Bolt's level 2 and 3 opening. But if I need Domingo to pick enemies off, like maybe 2 or 3, and they both have low health, I don't have to go and resort to... We could use fire too, which only costs what is it, five MP or six MP? Yeah, six MP. Or freeze two if I need to reach from further away. Instead of wasting the eight MP it costs to use bolt. So I'm gonna go with Domingo, but Yisha to me is closer for if you're just talking about raw damage output, it's gonna be Yisha. Because she gets bolt three long before Domingo. And I'm, and I'm I'm being a little hyperbolic, but she gets it a, a bit before Domingo does cuz that's her primary spell set is the actual bolt magic even though she starts with blaze. So, I'm going with Domingo and Wendy, don't get me wrong, Wendy is also an excellent choice. She is amazing. And this is like the closest we've had between three characters compared to Shining Force 1. The Shining Force 1 study. So, that's my that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So if we were to pick a party, how many characters can we put in a party? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We can have twelve. Okay, that's right, because Lug is the thirteenth. Um, wait, one, two, three, four, five. I always forget how many we can have. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 characters in a party. So my perfect party would be... Kudori has to be in there. Or Nick has to be in there. Um, Roos has... I'm putting Roos in there. He's a beast. Uh, for that offensive line. Shade's gonna go in. Sig. So let me... Let me count this out. So one, two, three, four. Uh... I... I don't think I'd use a paladin. <laughs> in all honesty, I don't think I'd use a paladin. But if I did, I would be Randolph. So what do we have? One, two, three, four. Uh, I'm not taking Cray. 
I would take a Birdman and I would take Claude. Um, and he, so I would take Claude. I'd take Mayfair. I'd take Yisha. Domingo. Um, if I took a Paladin, it would be Randolph. So let me let me see here. Of all the characters I said I'd take, how many do we actually have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine. So I actually have room for three more. So my last three, I'm at nine. So my last three would be... Oh, jeez. Um... I have three more characters I could take. Um, I'm not taking Wendy. Uh, I might take Stock. I would take... Uh, I counted Randolph, didn't I? I think I counted Randolph. I don't know. You could fill in the blanks with whoever you wanted, but... If we get to take 12 characters... 1, 2, 3, 4... 5... 6, 7... Eight, nine, ten. Me, me, Amigo's an option, so let's say eleven, just to make it simple. And I have room for one more. And you know what? I I wouldn't take Guyan, surprisingly. I I would. I you know I'd probably take Cray, because Cray can dish out. He dishes out pretty good damage too, and he can heal, so he has two purposes. There you go. There's the 12 characters I would pick for my perfect party. And Cray can be subbed out for anybody. Really. Anybody you think might be better for your playstyle. If you want another flyer, throw Shriek in there. If you want another... Um, if you want another Paladin in there, I guess... Uh, actually, there's no... Uh, if you want another Paladin in there, Apis is an option. But I didn't really like Apis. Or Wendy! Fucking throw Wendy back in there! Get three offensive casters. Fuck it, I changed my mind. Um, forget Cray, throw Wendy in there. There you go. That's my party. My, my party of 12. Um, to me, would be the best party. Because, you, again, you have a huge magical output. Um, and Wendy even could come out for another strong char physical character. So, that's... A, oh, you know, it's, you know what? Wendy or Cray. That would be my pick. But that's all of the characters leveled at 20. Now, the only question is, would Lug and Shriek and Gates be better? But here's the thing is Randolph came promoted, and he statistically was better than Apis. And he was statistically better than Kashin. Two paladin, two knights that we get, who we get to level them 20 levels before promotion. So the promoted dude actually was better. Okay, now every other character that was promoted wasn't, except maybe Domingo. Because Domingo got only 20 levels. Um, but um, Randolph outperformed the other Paladins. You know, Amigo, you could argue, his healing is pretty good. It's not the best because of the lack of versatility, but it's good. Um, so, I mean, starting for CD is much more tightly knit as far as, like, who's better than who. Um, there are, you can obviously tell some characters are significantly better than others based on just <coughs> looking at their base stats. Like, even Sig out hits Shade for damage. Now, and then if we gave Shade the Buster Shot, it'd be a little better. But that's the point, is that those, those stats are so high. Um, and then some characters are strangely abysmally low. Like, Apis is uh, is outclassed by, by Randolph? That's strange. Um, you know, Roos outclasses the other... Uh, outclasses Lug and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Gates. And we kind of saw that coming. Um, Claude outclasses Shriek. Um, you know, surprisingly, Stock is out... Uh, uh Shade outclassed Stock. Um, so that was an interesting comparison. And then Guyan was kind of in the middle of the, when we were, we, could, we used Guyan and compared him to the gladiators. Um, and it was interesting, but not that, that great. 
overall, it was, it's neat to see that, but it's not a big, big performance. You know, he's not that great, surprisingly, when compared to other characters. He doesn't offer that much, but he does have the higher HP, which means higher survivability, but that's subjective. Um, but yeah, so that's a rundown of Shining Force CD, getting characters to 20 levels, then promoting them, and then getting them another 20 levels, and then comparing their stats. If you, and I do believe people have gotten different numbers. I, I, I almost believe that that's probably true. Um, but these are the numbers we can use for this case of making a study to see who are the best characters in the game. And also keep in mind, too, Shining Force CD just, I believe, overall has less characters than Shining Force 1 and 2. Shining Force 2 having a freaking smorgasbord of characters to choose from. Shining Force CD and, and, Sh well, and Shining Force 1, for that matter, or, or Shining Force CD has less characters to look at. And it's just because it's it was a Game Gear game, so they had to, they couldn't make... I don't think there's as many characters. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six characters left out of the final battle. So, consider that when you play this. And know that we I sat down and I did the footwork. I'm going to do the same footwork in time for Shining Force CD Book 2. And then we need to... I might have a preparatory episode going into Shining Force 2 um, for max leveling. Because there's a lot of controversy about how you can even fairly study these guys. And it's going to be a lot of work, I think. Shining Force 2 is going to be a pain in the ass. Because those promoted characters get left in the dust. And I have to say that it's probably because they are promoted at level 20. And that's what they went with. And the problem with Shining Force 2 is characters gain stat bonuses all the way to level 99. And even on top of that, they can actually get so strong that the stat numbers turn into question marks. And that is rage-inducing to the nth degree when you're trying to compare stats. Because then you don't know what those stats are. You just know, hey, they're over 100. Um, and that doesn't help. So I'm going to have to figure out a, a way to do that analysis and, 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 and fairly. And it might be something that takes a few years of, of, of revisiting the game. So I might do something where I will I'll do a study of le promoting at 20 and then promoting those characters again. Uh, getting them to level 20 or even level 40 promoted and then compare their stats and see if they're very close to each other. If they are, then that's exactly what the game did sequentially. Now, because there's 99 levels distributed at random, I would have to do this study multiple times and take the best average. You can see where this becomes frustrating in order to figure out who on average is the best character. We can also take stats of anybody who does this exact same study. We can pool our data together and actually come up with a really cool test of who the best characters of Shining Force 2 are. And I'd love to get some people involved in that besides me. I hate to be the only guy doing it by himself. But for, for this sake, and going into Shining Force CD Book 2, we have a game plan. Will I do this for Shining Force Final Conflict? Only if you guys want me to. Though I've not live streamed that one. So I might actually play through it as a as a whole live stream. Uh, the, you have to remember, Meeps, I, and those of you who watch this later, Shining Force Final Conflict was a Game Gear game. And Game Gear graphics are not as good as the graphics you're seeing now. But it would be cool to pull that one out because it, it actually connects Shining Force 1 and Shining Force CD to Shining Force 2. So it's kind of a cool game. It's a shame we never got it out here in the West. Um... I don't even think they got it in Europe. Um, but yeah, so that might be uh, something for us to consider uh, as well. Um, so there it is, guys. We, we did it. I'm excited. We, we got through it, y'all. Um, Shining Force CD Book 1 in the bags. If you guys have questions, let me know. You know, you know, find out. Bring me the shittiest graphics you can find. Do it! Okay, Meeps. It's on. Alone in the dark. Let's do it. It's a, <laughs> the original Alone in the Dark game. Why not? Um, and that's not even that shitty. They're shittier out there. Debbie Does... Oh, what is it? Um, not Debbie Does Dallas. The, the, me, what is it? The uh, Commodore, Commodore 64 uh, Custard's Last Stand. There you go. Except I'd probably get kicked off Twitch for playing that game. Anyway, 
and it came out on the Atari 2600. Ah. Oh, Atari, whatever. Yeah, Atari 32, 32, whatever. It came out on the first Atari. <laughs> Thanks, Meeps. Um, so anyway, there's the analysis um, and all of that done. And I think I think this was good. I think this was a good experience for us to to get this one done. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. I'm your host, the RPG Guy. And we'll see you guys on the next stream. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Because obviously I'm going to put this on YouTube as well. So thanks for stopping by. And you guys have a great time with this data. And I demand that you argue over who's the best characters really are. Do it! Do it! All right, guys, we'll see you guys next time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please take a moment to check out more episodes from the RPG Guy, Tuesday Night Team Up, and more. And please subscribe. Always support the channels you enjoy watching, and while you're at it, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Keep on gaming hard. See you next time.